On April 30th, 2017, I was sworn in as the first black woman to hold the position of student government president at the American University. Thank you. Thank you. The following day, May 1st, my first day in office, I was a victim of a racially motivated hate crime. An individual hung bananas from nooses in various places around campus, emblazoned with phrases in reference to the sorority of which I am a member, and a gorilla that was killed at a zoo. In the days that followed, I was inundated with messages of support from family and friends, but also from strangers from around the country, telling me to stay strong, keep my head held high, and that I was handling the situation with grace and poise. But there isn't a handbook on how to cope with being the victim of a hate crime. No one tells you how much this will forever change your life. No one tells you that anytime you hear of another racially motivated act, you'll become triggered in fear for your own safety. No one tells you how much of a dark cloud this will become over every aspect of your life. But what they do tell you is how much better things will be and expect you to go back to normal. Public service announcement, this is my new normal. Being overwhelmed with the outpouring of support, feeling guilty for having all of this support when so many others before me felt alone, frustrated that people misunderstand what it's like to be at the center and envy the platform, but forgetting that I never asked for this level of attention. Constantly asking, why me? Wondering why this act of hate and bigotry had to happen to begin with questioning myself, my vision, my purpose. Why me? Why me? Why me? Following the hate crime, I facilitated a town hall of over 400 people. I spoke about my experiences on a press conference on Capitol Hill, and I've shared my stories with countless others in order to let them know that they are not alone. Little by little, I've begun to take back control of my life. Marianne Williamson once wrote, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as we are liberated from our own fears, our presence automatically liberates others. Even while I was in the spotlight, inside I was shrinking away, trying to avoid the awkward stares and unwanted attention. I was fearful of saying the wrong thing and afraid that what I was doing would never be enough. Rather than owning the stage and amplifying the voices of those bellowing around me. But this is where I was wrong. The more I tried to hide, shrink around, avoid, the more power I was given to the act and to the powers that precipitate hate, bigotry, racism, and sexism. This is why I can stand before you today to tell you that there is proof in telling your story, that there is power in telling your story, and that there is closure in telling your story. In order to discuss inclusion, we must first learn to talk about what being excluded looks and feels like in its most blunt and raw forms. Exclusion is something I've experienced my whole life. Exclusion looks like coming home at age three and asking your mommy if black is bad. Exclusion looks like being in elementary school and being told by classmates, I don't really look at you as black. I mean, you're white on the inside like an Oreo. Not having the vocabulary to explain that it was my socioeconomic background, my social capital, my privilege that put me in these white spaces. Exclusion looks like being told by a teacher to look up the Merriam-Webster's definition of nigger out loud and read it in front of the class at age 13 because you made a white girl cry when you called her out for saying the word. 
Exclusion looks like walking down the street, visiting family friends at the beach, and being called niggers by a group of teenage white boys while walking with your parents and your 11-year-old brother. Exclusion looks like being a freshman in college and watching people post anonymously on social media racial epithets and derogatory comments, not knowing if it was your roommates, your classmates, or your professors. Exclusion looks like being the target of a third banana-related incident this academic year, targeted at black women and being the only one to receive this level of attention, due in part to the fact that you are the first black woman student government president. To those who might be uncomfortable by the words I've just spoken and feel guilty from hearing these accounts, forgive me for refusing to hide behind my experiences any longer. You see, this is my life and these are my stories. If I did not use this platform to do so and to share my story with you, I would be reaffirming the faulty notion that this is okay and that we must hide our experiences and bottle it up and not share these things. So how do we create more inclusive communities? How do we build and come together? First, let's stop turning to communities of color and asking the question, well, how do we create inclusive communities? <laughs> Instead, let's turn to ourselves and ask the question, what do we need to do to end these exclusive communities and create communities that validate the experiences of those who have felt unable to exist? Instead, let's turn to ourselves and ask the question, how are we you know, engaging in these topics? How are, we, how are we putting other people in uncomfortable situations? And let's stop saying that everything is gonna be okay if we're not prepared to do what it takes to make sure that things actually are okay. Here at AU, let's build community by providing all students with the opportunity to express themselves through town hall meetings and group dialogues. Let's brainstorm ways to create a more inclusive and accepting community. Through collaboration, let's evolve this campus culture into one that validates the experiences of marginalized communities rather than discounting their realities. Let's work together to address issues of hate and racism and bigotry on a, in a head-on manner. Let's create a different you. Now, some of you may know that this was my campaign slogan when I ran for student government president a few months ago. Because although we have different experiences, we are all a part of this university. However, I think that this slogan goes a little bit further than American University. So here are my questions for you. How can we come together to apply this to life in the real world? Can we hold ourselves accountable to creating a higher set of standards to abide by? If so, I think we will find ourselves in a world far greater than the one we currently exist in. In order for us to create a truly inclusive environment, it begins with each one of us, whether that's on our college campuses, in our neighborhoods, or across the nation. So let's start that change now. Instead of being tolerant, be accepting. Instead of being closed-minded, go beyond and open yourself to new experiences and new perspectives. Instead of being sympathetic, dig deeper and have empathy. Once we commit ourselves to these three simple things, we will find ourselves in a world that's more kind, more loving, and more inclusive of all people. Until we are willing to combat these issues as a united people, we will continue to be putting a Band-Aid on cancer, the cancer that is a fear of the other. Until we are willing to provide the support necessary to eradicate acts of bigotry, hate, racism, and prejudice, we will continue to have empty and cyclical conversations about inclusion. Yes, we must recognize we are not all in the same place in terms of understanding inclusivity. However, we all have the ability to challenge ourselves to create a different you. Thank you. Yeah.